Today we're going to be doing Module 1, Lesson 17. The objective of today's lesson is to model the relationship between multiplication and division. The materials needed for today's lesson are your online whiteboard or your whiteboard dry erase marker and dry eraser. And we're going to continue to follow the teaching style where I do it, we do it together, and then you do it alone. We're going to start off with another application problem. I'm going to go ahead and read it to you and then give you some time to work on it. Mrs. Peacock bought four packs of yogurt. She had exactly enough to give each of her 24 students one yogurt cup. How many yogurt cups are there in one pack? Okay, so four packs of yogurt, 24 students all together, and each student only gets one. So we're looking for how many yogurt cups are there in one pack. Okay, so we've read the problem. You're going to draw something that helps you solve it, whether it's an array or a tape diagram or just another, some sort of picture. Then you're going to write an equation, solve the equation, and write a word sentence answer. Okay? When you have the answer, go ahead and message it to me in GoGuardian so that I know that you're ready to move on. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. We've got the four packs of yogurt and 24 students. Okay, and we want to know how many is in one pack. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a tape diagram. Okay, I know my total is 24 students. So, I'm going to label my tape diagram with 24 total. Now I know that there's four packs of yogurt, so that tells me that there's four groups, so I'm going to label that as well. Four groups. But now I need to actually break my tape diagram into four pieces. So I'm going to break it in half, and then in half again, I have one, two, three, four pieces. Okay, so now I have to figure out how many yogurt cups there are in just one pack. So right now, my unknown is the size of the group, okay? So there's my picture. Let's make my equation. 24 total students divided by four packs equals... How many yogurt cups per pack? Well, let's go ahead and solve it. So we need to put one pack of yogurt in each piece of the tape diagram until we get to 24. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, now let's go ahead and count how many are in each group. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the size of each group is six, which means 24 divided by four equals six. So then the question again is how many yogurt cups are there in one pack? Here's our word answer. There are six yogurts in a pack. Okay?
And if you solved it another way and still got six, that's perfect. Let's continue. We're gonna go ahead and do some group counting. We're gonna skip count by fours just as a practice since we are continuing to have um, examples and lessons that are practicing our fluency and counting by fours. Okay, so we're gonna start at zero, go all the way up and then all the way back down. Remember in your head, you can be thinking every other number by twos. So you could be thinking two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, I'm sorry, 14, 16, okay? So you can be thinking every other number in your head, but only saying it on the fours. All right, here we go. You ready? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, back down, 36, 32, 28, 24, 20, 16, 12, 8, 4, 0. All right, and obviously as we're practicing that, you do have the numbers there on the screen for you, but your goal is to try to not use them, okay? To get better at doing it in your head. Okay, so this brings us to the part of the lesson where I am doing an example to show you, okay? So my example says, think about this number bond, blank times four equals 24, or how we would say it, blank groups of four equals 24. Let's skip count by fours to find the unknown factor, okay? So I'm going to skip count by fours, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to add a leg of four each time. So, so far I'm at one group of four. When I get to two groups of four, now we're at eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. Okay, so as I counted, each time I added a leg of four. So there, I ended up adding one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six groups of four all together. So six times four equals 24. Well, now let's take a look at this one. This one is 32 divided by four. And you can see there's two different number bonds. So in this first number bond, you can see that there's 32, and then there's one, two, three, four groups. So what does the four represent in these number bonds? Well, in this number bond, the four represents the number of groups, because you can see there's four groups. Whereas this one over here represents the size because you can see the size of one piece of the number bond is four. All right, so let's go ahead and start with this one over here. And we're gonna keep adding legs of four until we've gotten to 32. Four, eight, 12, Whoops. 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. Okay, so we ended up having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs of four. Okay, so we've solved 32 divided by 4, which equals 8. Okay, now let's come over and look at this number bond. What does that mean for this number bond? 
Well, that means that each of these question marks, or the unknown, now becomes an 8. So this picture over here on the left shows 32 divided into four groups equals 8 per group. This one over here, same equation, is 32 divided into groups of four equals eight groups, okay? So it's the same equation, but two different pictures to represent, okay? Now, if you remember the commutative property, it said that four groups of eight which is this picture on the left, if that equals 32. Then this picture over here on the right, which is eight groups of four, also equals 32. Okay, so that's really kind of what this is going towards, is that the division equation can be represented by two different number bonds, because when we multiply, we can take the two numbers and switch them and our answer stays the same, okay? So four groups of eight, which is over here, and eight groups of four, which is over here, is really the same thing because they both equal 32, okay? And when you're doing that division equation, you can see we have the same three numbers, 32, four, and eight. 32, four, eight. 32, four, eight okay it's the same three numbers they're just switched around in division the biggest number comes first in multiplication the biggest number comes at the end and that's going to be really important to remember as you move into your uh homework tonight okay so this one you're going to do with me a classroom has tables that see a total of 20 students. Four students are seated at each table. How many tables are in the classroom? Okay. So, we have a total of 20 students. Four of them are at each table. How many tables are in the, the classroom? So he, over here, we have an example for our multiplication and an example for our division using that 20 and the 4. So over here, we see there's blank groups of 4. So blank groups of 4 students at each table equals 20 students total. And then there's the division, which takes the 20 students and divides them into groups of 4. And what does that equal? Okay. So I want you to take a moment to go ahead and draw some sort of picture to help, help you solve this answer. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's make it a number bomb so we're doing it all the same. Twenty is our total number of students, and there's four students at each table. So go ahead and draw that number bond, and you need to add legs of four until you get to twenty. I'm going to give you about two minutes to complete that picture and figure out how many legs you'll have on your number bond.
about one more minute. So if you've finished already, go ahead and fill in those equations on your board. Okay, go ahead and hold up your whiteboards and let's see what answer you got. Remember, I'm looking for participation. So even if your answer is not correct, it's at least that you showed your work and tried. Okay, so we were making legs of four until we got to 20. So first we're at four. Eight, twelve, and if it's hard for you to keep track, you can write the skip count on the outside. Four, eight, twelve. Sixteen. Because you may not be counting by fours, you may need to be counting your fingers. So you may be at eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, write it down, 13, 14, 15, 16, write it down, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, and that's totally fine if you still need to use your fingers because that's still helping you get the correct answer. Okay, so we have our number bond. We made groups of four, so if each one of these circles is a table, there's four students at each table. We have 20 students all together. So how many tables are in the classroom? Well, one, two, three, four, five. So we have five groups of four, and that equals our 20 students. Or if we're looking at division, we had 20 students and we divided them into groups of four, and we ended up with five groups. So you can see how our division equation is almost like our multiplication equation except backwards. 20 divided by 4 equals 5. 5 times 4 equals 20. Okay? Same three numbers. Both equations have a 5. Both equations have a 4. Both have equations have a 20. When you're doing your worksheet, this is going to be really important. Okay? When you're doing your worksheet, you can see it has the division equation or the multiplication equation and then the division equation. Okay. So you need to keep an eye on that because it's going to be the same three numbers. So whatever is in this blank is probably going to end up being what's in this blank. Same over here. Okay. So you have to keep an eye on that when you're doing your equations for your worksheet. So let's go back a second because there was one more question here. What does the unknown in each of our problems represent? Well, the unknown we figured out in each of these was 5. Okay. We know that there's three numbers in a multiplication or a division equation. There's the total. There's the number of groups, and there's the size of each group. Those are our three parts. Well, we already knew that the total was 20 students, and we knew that the size of each group was four, which is why when we made our number bond, we made each one four. So the number of groups, this was our unknown, okay? We ended up figuring out that that was five, but what did our unknown represent? Our unknown represented the number 
of groups. Okay, so that brings us to our worksheet again that you'll be doing alone. So you're going to be thinking about what is that blank? What is that unknown? So here, one times four. Well, over here, we're on the first row, and there's four in each row. And that equals what? Okay. Is it the total number of bugs? Is it the size of the group? Or is it the number of rows? Well, if we're solving the multiplication, then we're looking for the total. Because we know the biggest number always comes last in multiplication and first in division. Okay, so it's going to be the same number. Whereas if you look down here at this last one right here, blank groups of four equals 16. Well, now we have a total array with 16 bugs total. They're in groups of four or rows of four. So how many groups are there? How many rows are there, okay? Same here, 16 bugs divided into rows of four equals how many rows? All right, so you kind of have to think about it that way when you're working on the homework. How are those two equations related? And how does knowing what the unknown is help you put that number, in, fill that number in? Okay, so go ahead and uh, open up that Cami homework. It's just number one, which is the whole page, but each row will build on top of each other. Go ahead and get started.